Hey guys, it's iMaster, and today I'm going to be t showing you uh, one of the most underlying features in iWeb, the color palette. Let's get started. Now when you first open iWeb, the first thing you see is a blank page. Now I have uh, cleared off this page and just inserted a simple square to use as our test dummy for this video. Uh, so let's get right into it. So when you're working with this square, you may want to change the color of it. And for that, you use the color pa um, palette, tab, whatever. Click on the shape, change the fill, and you have your color palette. So the first tab is the color wheel, which is the most basic um, way of changing the color. You simply slide the little square among um, around in the circle and change the brightness or kind of tint of the color. And you can change the opacity here so that you can have just um, not just a solid color. You cannot go, however, completely um, like invisible when you're doing gradients. Uh, iWeb doesn't let you do it. I don't know why, but it doesn't. It's um, you can't do it. So you can't go from nothing to a solid color. So we have this box, and let's give it a colorful. Alright, so right now the color fill is white. We can change that to a gray, um, let's see, maybe this color. 50% on the grayscale slider. Alright, that's that's pretty cool, um, basic gray. We can also do color sliders, such as RGB sliders. Adjust the color like that. CMYK sliders, which just give you different colors to adjust with. And of course, you could enter the percents here, and the HSB sliders. Now, HSB are my favorite um, because you have a color, let's say, but if you want to adjust the brightness of that and you try to use the grayscale, it just converts it to a gray, a gray um, or black and white color. With the HSB, you have a color. You can adjust the brightness, and it still keeps that same, I don't know how to say it, same pitch or same tone of color. It just gets darker or lighter. And of course, you can change the saturation and the actual hue or color of it. Then we have the color palettes. As you can see right now, I am in the web safe colors, which when you're web designing, you should try to always stay within the boundaries of because they are web safe. Now, really, nowadays, most browsers um, support all colors, but just to be safe, yeah. You have the crayon colors, um, which I guess are colors from, like, crayons. Whoops. And it's changing with me. Then we have, oops. We can create our own palette by going to the drop-down menu, selecting you. And we can name our first color. Let's call this um, yucky because I think it's a yucky color. Then to rename, we just go to the little gear, click rename. We'll call it tutorial. Now, to um, one reason you would want to create your own palette is just so that you have a constant color scheme. Um, you can name them actual useful names such as gradient top color if you're in like a two color gradient um, Text color main text color logo color stuff like that So that's something else that's really helpful Now while we're in the palettes, I'm gonna go ahead down here. Oh and to add colors to the palette you click plus minus um, Yeah, you can search for colors within palettes um, as well so down here we have we when you first open it um it probably won't have any of these colors it'll probably just all be white like so let's get our box back okay so there's our box now you can add some of your most used colors such as i use um this color a lot so I'll drag that down here so that I don't have to search for it every time I could just click change click change click change click you get the idea okay 
So that's another great feature of the color palette. Now, one of the most interesting things in this video that I'm almost 100% sure you didn't know, um, because this seems like a pretty useful fe un uh, useless pe feature at first, God, I can't talk, um, is the one that kind of has a picture on it. So at first, the image is just a spectrum, which, you know, resembles the color wheel an awful lot. You drag, and it changes colors. Um, if you notice the slow gray square, I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, I, I think it just means you've gotten it from this little tab in the palette. As far as I can tell, it doesn't do anything weird. Okay, so we have this... Um, spectrum. Now, one thing that we need to do a lot in web design is match colors. Now, let's say we have a logo. Let's say we designed it in GIMP. Okay, so we have this GIMP logo, and we're trying to find the color that matches with part of the logo, but we just can't find it. What do you do? You drop this down, you click New from File. That'll bring up your uh, Find Your Navigator thing. Locate to where you saved the image click open and looky there now you have your image you can drag over the color you want to find and it matches perfectly so um, that's the one of the last palettes the next one is the crayon now the crayons is one of the easiest um, for just keeping constant colors because they're clearly defined within the colors the last feature is the little inspector glass which is you could basically um, drag over any color like let's say this blue here select it and it'll give you that same color which is helpful because it's not limited to iWeb like I can go um, let me drag this down I can select this blue and it'll give me that blue. So it doesn't have to be in iWeb, which is also really, really cool. Now you may notice that my color um, palette thingy has another tab, and that is this number tab. What this is, is a hex color picker. This is another way to conveniently match uh, colors. So what you do is you just type in number, then random text no it has to be an actual hex color if you don't know what a hex color is it's um a, a code sort of commonly used in web design so number i know for a fact that number uh three 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 is a nice dark gray color so you can just type in that and it gives you the color you can enter this number in most graphics programs and also when you if you ever hand code a design uh, just to match colors I use this a lot when going to GIMP trying to figure out what that color is um, clicking that and finding it but now your big problem is well my color palette doesn't have that why not well it's because I installed it separately so right now I'm going to run you through a quick way of how to install this um, I have it open in Safari right here. So all you need to do is download it. Um, a file will come up um, once it's finished downloading. Then you need to navigate to the location that is now shown on your screen. Once you've done that, um, if iWeb is already open, you may have to restart. So quit and then reopen. And it should be there. And this isn't just for iWeb, it is for all applications that require the Mac color palette. Um, so it should work in all those applications. So guys, that's just about it. I don't think I left anything out. You can expect some more videos in this series. But until next time, thanks for watching. See you later. Rate, comment, subscribe.